with the East African Common Market, now more than two years old, change is starting to be felt as countries begin to fully implement the protocol. It would take 18 days for a container to move from Mombasa to Kampala. By removing roadblocks, way bridges, multiple administrative procedures and multiple bonds, the days the container takes have been reduced from 18 to 3 or a maximum of 4. Uh, some slight improvement on the number of roadblocks which we were experiencing through Mombasa to Kampa, they have reduced. In fact, uh, they were about over 20. Now they could be in the ranges of uh, 8 to 10. For the manufacturers, it starts with opportunity created. We, we export a lot to Western Kenya, as a matter of fact. Uh, we export almost, uh, almost all our products to Western Kenya, up to water. Up to water. You would, la you, you would not imagine that our water crosses borders, but we do. We really do. We export a lot to northern Tanzania. We export a lot. Burundi is, is basically getting its products from Uganda. So if they reach Burundi, they are going through Rwanda, therefore Rwanda takes advantage or also receives some products. However, the opportunities leave a lot to be desired when it comes to the establishment of business where it is mostly still rhetoric for some countries. Especially Uganda is establishing business in other countries. Others are freer to establish their businesses in Uganda, but they are giving us headache when you want to establish our businesses in their country, especially Tanzania and Kenya. One of our members who had established himself in Tanzania, but what they did is to waive off taxes for the Wanaichi and levy the taxes to ours. And what happened eventually that our person had to produce goods at higher cost against his counterparts for the same good. And of course that kicks you out of the market. Could some states be giving with one hand and taking away with the other in the name of protectionism? It's an issue to sort out for the ESC. Some problems stem from IT system bottlenecks, which initially are designed to help. And we were told that a school world is still on test. It is very much affected by availability of the internet. Systems sometimes break down and it takes about two to three days before it is reinstated. And then you can see the computer system, and you can see a chew of vehicles up to three, four kilometers when they have not been cleared because the systems are down. Despite the reduction of roadblocks, which normally increase the number of days cargo spends on the road, other non tariff barriers like way bridges sometimes spring up without warning. There are some others which are ad hoc which are just planted anyhow, and then they say, for us, we can't distinguish between a transit cargo and a domestic cargo. Then the traders are raising a security aspect that they claim springs from syndicates embedded within the port of Mombasa itself. The syndicate is right from their port because with some uh, affected cargo, we tried to track. Even port was not releasing us information. It took us about two months to get real information. But at the end of the day, when we got the number plates, the registration numbers of the vehicles which ferried those goods, we established that these vehicles, were, the, the, the registration numbers, were fictitious. From the submissions of some of the key beneficiaries of the common market, after two years, things are starting to improve. Some of them as a result of the will to act by the top leadership of these countries. Evidently though, suspicion and inconsistencies still trouble the integration process and make for more work, especially to virtually eliminate non-tariff barriers. Samo Setumba, NTV.